Hello. Well, it's now Friday afternoon. I usually get off work at 3, and today they decided we could get off work at 2. And I get paid for it, so it's like awesome. <laughs> was pretty happy about that. Okay, so I thought, well, as long as I am off early, I think I'll make my junk journal for July. And I'm doing it as a TN insert. So I had decided I was going to fold. And I think I'm gonna do I think I'm gonna do some distressing of this. But maybe I should distress in one of my pretty colors. Maybe the blue. I'm not sure. Um, I'm going to try it <clears throat> and see how that works and see if I like it. So that will be after we get some of this other stuff completed. So the first thing is to get this cut to the right size. So um, I usually just kind of cut... Um, I'm going to cut off right here, and then I have to figure out my measurements. Alright, let us see how this is going to work out. Kind of got a disaster here, and I just need to... got this rock, and it's in the way, and I just, I just need to move my rock. <sighs> okay, put it up there. So I picked out kind of what I would like to use. So I think I'll save this and use this for some pockets or something. So I'm not going to get rid of that. All right. So I think this is fine because I will tuck under a little bit, a tiny bit. So I'm going to take off this, this little bit at the top. So um, because this is the cover. <clears throat> it's going to be um, a little bit bigger than the other pieces. And then I will make this a fold. So I probably should figure, um, like this is a little too long right here. I just want to make sure I, need, I leave enough space. So that's sufficient. And then uh, I will make this flap right here go in. Probably what I need to do is get my laminating sheet out so I can, my laminating, laminator out and heating up because I'm going to make this into a laminated cover. Because, and then this is gonna be Boy, does that look crooked or what? Why does that look crooked? Did I just like, what did I do? It looks so crooked. It is not, something's not correct. That's right. It's all right. Why, why does it look crooked to me? Isn't that weird? Still looks crooked. I don't think I folded it straight. And it probably wasn't even hardly anything, but it bugs me because I feel like it's crooked, but it's not crooked. <laughs> it is, like if I bring it to this line, well, it's here. If I bring it to this line, then it should be following. Okay, let's bring it here. Yeah, it's straight. What is with me? And the cover is probably maybe just a teeny, teeny bit too big. It's so hard to know. I don't want to like overdo um, my sizing. Yeah, I think that'll be perfect. So now that I have the right size, Probably the easiest thing is going to just be, I'm going to laminate it so I don't really need to 
glue it, but I'll just put down a little bit of this to cut my uh, this paper off the right size. And then do I want it to be like this on the inside or do I want it to be like that? Ooh, the indecisions. Let's go up and down. Okay, vertical. So all I have to do is make sure I have it just like this. And then I just have to cut this to size, just like this. So that gives me pieces for pockets and things as well. So that's always nice. I can see I did not cut this perfectly. I did not put the paper on there perfectly straight. So I'm just going to make sure I cut my paper straight because I would like to have a straight cover. <clears throat> okay. So that's good. And I'm just going to, whoops. I'm just going to fold it wrong again. <laughs> oh, honestly, where's my, there's my thing. I just want to make sure I've got this correct. Just like, how many folds can I put into one thing, right? All right, and then let's uh, make sure that this is folded because we will be folding this after it's laminated. Okay, very nice, very nice. It's so cute. I love it so much. Okay, so the next thing is, I'm just gonna get the laminator out because it's right here and it doesn't really, take that long to do. So since I'm doing this whole thing on camera for you guys, I might as well just do the whole thing on camera. All right, let's turn that on. I'm just gonna turn it this way, open that. It's not gonna take very long to heat up and then I'll be ready. And I should get a sheet of my a lam a laminating sheet right here. And let's just move this down. Um, for now. So I'm going to put my, open this up. And it's, um, I think it's just it's just gonna make it. You know what, if it's not gonna make it, I'm gonna trim it. It looks like it needs a tiny trim. Let's do a tiny trim. Because, oh my goodness, I, I want this to work. I don't want this to not, like, be, not work. That would really be awful. And I'm just tempted to cut, round off my sides. Um, this is the stub, so this isn't rounding, but it's going to create this um, kind of an edged look, which I do like. And then um, I'll probably have to do this on the laminated on this part here, but let's just go in here just to get that done and I think just because of how it looks I'm going to just do it here too because I want that look all right so we got that much ready okay yeah I like that a lot so and I was gonna distress so maybe while that's heating up let me let me do a little distressing. I'm just thinking, you know, with 
the hot summer days that um, blue blue distress ink would be good. This is um, Ranger, Tim Holtz, and this is uh, Broken China. And I think it's gonna turn out pretty cute, actually. Yeah, I when I'm just doing an insert like this, I like to make a cover and um, if you laminate it, um, it gives you the strength that you need because there's two two sheets here. They're, the cam the calendar piece is very thin, and this is actually very thin pattern scrapbook paper too. Just happened to you know be that way. That's just how it is sometimes. Let's. I'm gonna do that one just because I feel like that will look better considering it's the flap. So pretty easy to do. And I'm gonna go ahead and do do this too. But I thought, you know what, I'll just show you my prep from beginning to end so you can kind of see what I do and we can go on this daily journaling thing together, right? I feel like I could make this a little more noticeable on these lighter parts up here looks really good that way. There we go. I'm really liking it. Isn't it cute? Oh my goodness. It is so adorable. Alright, let's go ahead and um, I'm definitely happy with that color. So I'm definitely going to um, use that for distressing the pages. Oh, I didn't put that in the laminating sheet. Hang on. Let's open this again. Here we go. Now let's get this centered well because I'm not going to have to trim this because I think if I get it centered, it's going to be just perfect all the way around and I won't have to trim it at all. Yeah, perfect. Wonderful. So we'll just um, let that go through. I just want it to grab. I'll bring it so you can here so you can see it. I run my pieces through three or four times. Um, I just prefer to do it that way. I, I think it's I don't know. It just seems better. Once it's through, though, I'm gonna do the stub chomp on that so that this is the same. Oh my gosh, it's going to be so adorable. I used to do collage on my covers a lot, but I this one, sometimes, I guess sometimes, you know, you don't have to do collage every time. I think, you know, we just, we evolve, right? And you change um, some of your styles of doing things. I think that's kind of normal. There. It's really not cutting nicely. We've never had so much trouble. Hmm. I guess laminating doesn't cut as nice. See, now I'm tempted. I think I'm going to cut... I feel like I should cut some, well, you know, I don't need to cut that, but I will, I will try and get this to do its thing the way it's supposed to. The chomping thing is not liking it as much, is it? <laughs> I feel like I'm creating a mess, you know? Sometimes it doesn't want to do what you want it to do. There's nothing you can do about it. But put 
it up with it. This part will be on the inside, so it's not a big deal. I'm going to run it through one more time. And usually I go this way, the opposite way completely. So we'll let this do that. I hope this isn't like watching paint dry to watch this go through a few times. <laughs> I want it to be correct. I think it's going to be good, you know. Once it goes through, I'm going to go ahead and do the folding so I can chomp out those pieces and then put it through again um, so that it's hopefully ready. Okay, so so now, I, here's my folds. So it's still warm. I'm just gonna fold it up quick while it's still nice and warm. Because... Okay, good. And then let's do this one right here. I think it's a, such a cute one for summer. I really do. Alright, so that means I should be able to do this. Oh, that one worked. I guess thicker works a lot better than thinner, doesn't it? Huh, that's interesting that that worked so much better. Crazy, isn't it? Okay, so let's see. Let's see. Now we're going to run her through. Let's run it through again this way. Well, actually this way. And I think that will be enough and we'll be done because, you know, enough is enough. <laughs> and then I'm going to make some pages. I said I was going to make some pages out of these and some pages out of coffee stained paper. So I just need to mark on my um, cutter the right sizes for that. Yeah, I think... Um, I think I like it. I feel like it's going to be okay, you know? It's so adorable. There we go. Alright. Fold her back up while it's still... Um, <laughs> fold it back up while it's still warm, okay? Let's turn off the machine. Turn it off. I think we're good as far as our time. And this. Okay, I think that's good. Um, it may be that this will go, this probably won't go on the outside. I, I wanted this as a pocket. Um, that was the whole purpose of this piece. And I just feel like I need to trim that off because that's annoying me for some reason. I think it's, it's going to interfere, you know? Let's get the laminator out of here. Okay, that was a scotch laminator. Pretty inexpensive, really. I think it was only like 20 bucks. And... It works well. I just feel like I need to um, trim this because it, it is bothering me. <laughs> and if it's bothering me, I should trim it. So the idea is that this is going to be a pocket right here. And so I will have to get that down pretty tight. I'm going to go ahead and trim the rest of this because it's just, it's too much, you know. 
So I'm going to trim it so it's all the same. If you trim too close, then you end up with separating. So you do, you know, you want to be careful that you leave enough of an edge that you don't have any separation. I, and here, this should be fine. And this one, which is the one I trimmed, this is the one I need to trim. Okay, that was very, very little trimming actually on that piece, very tiny amount that got trimmed. So yeah, I think that's better. So if I have um, one that's this size, it will fit just fine. So the, this is the size paper I want to use because it's a standard it's a standard size. So maybe the best thing is just measure here. So, okay, so let's measure this paper, like, if this is where it's gonna get sewn in, I only want it to come to right there, like that white spot right there. So that means I want to trim it at four and a quarter. So let's move this. This helps me make sure I'm trimming my papers um, correctly. So four and a quarter, um, but um, four and a quarter and four and a quarter is eight and a half. So actually it's going to be here to the eight and a half. Then this, um, we're going to leave a little bit again and it's going to be like, uh, let's just go here to right here. So an eight and an eighth is going to be um, how long it is. Okay. I just have to like be sure I'm doing this correctly. Okay, as much as I love using the washi where I need it, <laughs> Sometimes it's a pain. Okay, that just helps me know that um, I want to go to eight there and eight and a half there. Because I said eight and a quarter and eight and a quarter. And the best way to figure this out is to cut one paper and measure it. So let's take this. <laughs> I don't need this anymore. And I just have to make sure I cut the right amount of paper, too. That's the other thing. So we're cutting eight and a half. <clears throat> That's um, supposed to be across the top. Okay, so there's your eight and a half. And then we do eight and a quarter. Okay. All right, so I got plenty of leftover scraps of paper, which is really good with stuff like this. Um, I'm just going to put it over here. Okay. All right, so technically, if I did this right, um, this is my length, this is my baker. So this is across the top. So technically, I should be able to fold this and it will fit the correct size in the cover. So the answer to that is yes. Because when you put a bunch together, they're gonna to be different sizes because you're pushing them in, so there'll be different sizes here. But yes, this is what I want right there. So let's see how many I come up with, because I don't know. Oh, that's going to work out. Let's do my eight and a half and then my smaller. And just so I don't get confused, I want to be sure I just go ahead and fold it right away because otherwise I'm worried that I'm going to cut it wrong and I don't want to do that because that would be so sad. So yeah, some of the paper is going to be um, 
white on one side and some will be coffee stained. So it does, it just depends, right? All right. But I think this is gonna work out really well. And I wanna kinda count, you know, I wanna make sure I have the right number of pages because, okay, July has 31 days. And 31 times three days. <laughs> it's like I'm trying to do math. I'm terrible at math. Is 93. So, okay. 93. Right? 31 times three. And then... I want three sides per per pay, per thing, so that I end up with that many sides, 93 sides. Each of these sheets uh, makes four sides, okay? So, four, <laughs> this is really terrible. Oh my goodness, four sides. All right, and you have, you want 93 total, right? So you have four sides. So, um, let's see here. I want 93 sides equals three per day, okay? Three sides per day. One sheet equals four sides. Uh, 93 divided by 4. Now, I'm not counting the front and the back and the last page. Usually, I don't count. Um, so, um, so actually, I probably want 95 sides, right? 95. Okay, so let's just see how this works out. So, 4 into 5, that's one time. That's not right. Four times two, four times twenty is eighty. Okay, so four times twelve, I believe, is ninety-eight. Four times eleven, no, twenty-one. Eighty-one, no, no, no. Four times thirty is one hundred and twenty, and that's too much. Four times twenty-five is a hundred. And that's too much. So four, let's take four times 22. That's 88. Six, that's 97. 27 times four. Seven times four is 28. Carry the two, eight, nine, 108. That's not right. What is wrong with me? I can't even add, I can't, I can't even multiply. Six times four is 24, that's 104, that's too much. 24 times four, four times four is 16. Eight, 96. I need 24 sheets of paper. All right guys, help me to remember this because boy, was that crazy. 24 sheets of paper should give me the right size. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna do this, and then we're gonna count, and we're gonna see if I got it right. Man, not math was never my strong point. In fact, here's how it was never my strong point. My favorite classes were art, um, history, English, and history. Those were my favorite classes. Okay. And when I got to ninth grade, I had to take, I think it was ninth grade, I had to take algebra. And I didn't understand it. And after a week, I was in a very small school, by the way, I had less than 30, like 30 people in my class max. After a week, uh, my 
algebra teacher realized that there was no way on earth I was going to learn algebra, and I wasn't the only one. There were uh, there were uh, a couple of us. There weren't that many of us, honestly. But um, so she decided we would be better off with. Um, business math. So she, oh, she put us in business math, which was fine. You learned how to do it, budgeting and a checkbook and all that stuff, which probably didn't do me any good either, but you know, whatever. So, um, and then I was in chemistry. Uh, I wasn't any better at chemistry. Must have been in chemistry in tenth grade or something. I don't remember, but oh my gosh! It okay. It wasn't so hard to start. So I got this is how my grades went: first quarter, A; second quarter, B; third quarter, C. Are you seeing a pattern here? Fourth quarter, guess what? D. Yeah, I did manage to pass. But boy, I tell you, it was not my thing at all. I did not like it. I <laughs> did not like it. I did good in English and history and art. So yeah. Well, the funny thing is, um, I have to do something while I'm cutting paper, so I'm just telling you stories. They're true. My brothers, uh, okay, I had four brothers and one sister. My sister and I were both not really any good at math. And that sciences and all that it just was not our thing. And my brothers, and neither, like my mom, I don't know if she was either. But my brothers and my dad were all super smart. My dad worked for IBM. He was very good at all the math and stuff like that. My brothers were all very good at math and sciences. In fact, two of them were really, really good. And um, isn't that crazy? And I remember my mom telling me that I was just average because I wasn't good at math. She's, you're not, she always said, like, you know, you're not smart like your um, brothers. And you're just average. And in school, you know. And I guess I was okay with that because I knew that that was an area I struggled in. So it wasn't like shock to me, you know. So yeah, that's kind of how my life was. And it wasn't the only area where she told me stuff like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, we have eleven. What happened here? What the heck? <laughs> I was probably supposed to fold this the other way. Anyway. Math skills, people. Math skills. 11. <laughs> and I need 24 sheets. So I'd kind of like to do one more of these in 12. So let me check my scrapbook pad and see if I have another color I could finagle. Yeah, so my mom, you know, she just, I don't blame her, you know, for telling me stuff like that because she grew up, you know, in a really difficult home situation where her mother um, basically hated her, told her she hated her, was, you know, was really mean to her and um, I didn't know this till years later of course but I'm not upset with my mom or anything you know one thing and I took this the other way this is kind of funny is that um, well maybe it's not funny but my mom um, told me once she was gonna try and teach me how to cook my mom was you know this color and um, she that was her thing. Well, I don't know what I was doing because it wasn't cooking because she never got around to actually teaching me how to cook or bake or anything. But she was teaching me, so I was doing something and I think I messed up. And so she told me that I was 
too stupid to learn and that she was not going to teach me how to cook, how to cook. So I think I was, I don't know, was I 14, 15, something like that. So I determined that when I got out of home that I would just learn how to teach myself to cook. And so that's what I did. I um, just taught myself. And you know what? I excelled. I love to cook. I think that I cook very well. That I'm a good baker and cook. And I do a lot of my cooking from scratch. I've got like 40 herbs and spices and I can just kind of tell what I should put in something and put it in and it turns out good. Okay? And I can bake. I've baked all kinds of things. So... I think I was just determined that I wasn't going to let my mom define me in that way. You know, she just, I don't blame her. She didn't know. I mean, she never once told us when we were growing up that she loved us. And my brother, my youngest brother, finally asked her why she never told him that she loved him. And she said she didn't know that she was supposed to. And that just shows that... You know, she, with that situation, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, um, sorry, nine, ten, I gotta count in my mind, eleven, twelve, that, um, She, she didn't have an example. And, and later, I finally just, like when I was an adult, I finally just started telling her that I loved her. And I had to do the same with my dad because he just wasn't very expressive. It wasn't that he wasn't kind or anything. He just, just didn't do that. A uh, very uh, la super, super laid back type of person. And... Um, I just realized I cut one of those the wrong size. Um, so, you know, that's just how it was with my, my family. And, you know, I just decided I had to show them what, if I wanted to have them tell me that they love me, then I was just going to have to make that effort to do the same so that, you know, they would reciprocate. And you know what? It worked. It really did. It did work. So that's good, right? Yeah. So anyway, that was how things were. And, yeah. I think my mom, um, because she got married, okay, she got married like a month and a half after she turned 18. And they had only known each other for two months. And they got married. My dad was, my mom had grown up in Pennsylvania. And she was working in New York City as a telephone operator. And my dad grew up in Minnesota and went to IBM out of high school in Rochester. And so he, um... um oh, Terry, come on. <laughs> he went to New York for two months or whatever to train. I, and I don't even know how they actually met each other, but they did. And so he, they got married after two months. So my mom had just turned 18 a month and a half before. They got married in November. And my dad had turned 19. He must have turned 19. 18, 19. 
because uh, he was a year older than my mom. So he must have turned 19 uh, like two weeks, three weeks before they got married. And then they moved back to Minnesota where my dad grew up on a farm in southeast Minnesota. So they moved back to Minnesota. And you know, my mom wasn't prepared for this. I mean, good heavens. Moved back where she know, didn't know anybody. She had no friends, um, no relatives. What size did I cut this at? <laughs> and um, so I'm sure that was hard on her. Plus, they got married the end of November and she had her first baby the following September. And in the next 11 years, she had, in the first 11 years or whatever, she had six kids, okay? And then my dad, he worked nights at IBM, so he wasn't home. He worked a night shift, so like he would go to work at maybe three or so in the afternoon, and then he came home um, like sometime in the middle of the night, you know. So once us kids started school, my, um, we didn't even see my dad because he would be asleep when we got up and then he would already be gone to work when we got home. So we never saw him except on weekends. Um, and then in the summer we saw him a little bit more, but really not very much. And um, so my mom basically had to raise us. And, you know, that's a lot of responsibility. And four boys, two girls. Okay, my mom wanted girls. And she became Catholic. And while we were, you know, she had been raised an atheist. And she became Catholic for a bit there. And so you just kept having kids. And she wanted a girl anyway, so she just kept trying until my sister was born. So my sister's eight years younger than me. I am the second oldest in the family. So anyway, my mom did the best she could. You know, that's all I can say about that. And it's kind of how it is, you know. She didn't let us participate in anything in school at all. She was super strict and controlling with us like way beyond necessary and I know she went through some really bad really bad postpartum depression with my the last two siblings um, because they were only like 15 months apart and I just just from things people have told me I know that she went through like some really difficult um, circumstances so just you know emotionally and um, I guess that was that was pretty evident so yeah you know that's how it is uh, I feel blessed because I always was of a more calm temperament and more of a positive person despite the hard time some of the hard times I remember wishing that my grandparents would adopt me. My grandparents only lived a quarter mile down the road, my dad's family. Um, I never saw my mom's side uh, growing up except one time. We took, I guess my parents took a vacation out there when I was two. And then um, the only family vacation we took, we did go out east to meet my mom's family. I was 13. We drove out in a station wagon all the way from Minnesota to New Jersey. But um, one of these, it's not like the others. <laughs> you know that song? This one is not like the others. Um, so, this should be four, four and a quarter. That is what is partly wrong. I probably just folded it the wrong direction. This should be eight and a quarter. I obviously folded it the wrong direction. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, so yeah, that was kind of my life. So it goes, I should see what time it is. All right, so here are, this should be enough. And that definitely is thick enough. Uh, so let's see if I am correct. So this, there'd be nothing on this page. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 23, 24, 25, 27, 31, 35, 39, 43, 47, I don't, and I need 47, and I need 93 pages for sure, 95, 47. 51, 55, 59, 63, 67, 71, 95. Look at that. Perfect. Perfect. That will give me 95 will give me um, three sides per day, which is certainly sufficient, I would say. So let me see what time it is. Ew, 45 minutes. I'm going to stop <laughs> and I will come back for a part two. Okay. Bye.